all of this and more, as they say, um, I'm just going to remind everybody that, that you can uh, go into Rabbi's website, Rabbi Barber's website. There's a link. And you can get to the DVD of the Secret Jews of Calabria, and uh, have a chance at home to watch. It's uh, almost—it's over 50 minutes of these kind of one after another, these incredible stories, and Rabbi Barbara's incredible journey. I mean, I'm blown away always by by this sense of of how you not only discovered or rediscovered your roots, but how you turned it into a life's work in Calabria, so uh, I'm, I'm blown away, but I hope, I hope people are going to get to see the movie. Rabbi, I have a question based on something that you just said. You said that, you know, there's often people that until the moments of their passing, they will never, uh, you know, share with their family that they're Jewish and then ask to be buried in a certain way. Because you're the you're the only rabbi in the area, do you ever have people that call upon you at, in these last minutes to either be there or to perform a funeral, even though their entire lives their families thought that they were Catholic? It's happened on two occasions, and on both occasions, the family had had a greater sense of their Jewish heritage than most other families did. They um uh, they knew the word Ibre. They knew that uh, uh, they 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 maintained a lot of the of the kosher eating traditions that have been lost over the years. So there was more more Judaism, if you will, more a stronger Jewish tie than than many other families have here. And on both occasions, the women were near death, and the uh, the grandchildren, not the children, but the grandchildren, have come to me because they're very interested in their in their Judaism and want to know if I will say a special prayer in Hebrew at the funeral. And as long as the priest allows me to do so, um, I do. In one occasion, the woman was not even having the priest; she was just having a family member say something at the cemetery, which would be similar to a Jewish graveside service and so it was a little more a little more comfortable for me to do Kaddish there and to uh, and to provide the Kaddish prayer in Italian so people knew what uh, what, uh, what 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 we, what I was saying and uh, uh, people there's there's some there's a sense of relief I, I would have to say more often than not a sense of relief that people say to me like the grandchildren in this case will say to have said to me you know, we always knew. We always knew that we were. We we knew, and if it's 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 so good to know. It's so good to get this out. And uh, one other thing I'd like to say to you too is that when we're talking here about this episode about uh, the strangers at my door, sometimes I am the stranger at someone else's door because someone will come to me and say, "I want to show you something Jewish in our home," and more often than not. At the entrance, in many Italian houses, there is a foyer entrance, and then there are double doors entrance into the into what is called the soggiorno, the large kitchen living room area. These double sets of doors keep out the cold, especially in these mountain communities. But when you go into the first set of of um, of, um, of doors, which is called the foyer or vestibule, sometimes too, on the in the pavimento into the pavement is uh, is. Uh, all through these mountain towns, you find the, uh, the Magain David, the Star of David. They have sometimes been covered up with cement, sometimes covered up with wood, sometimes just covered up with a, um, uh, a rug. And during the the, um, the time of, um, of, of uh, uh, during the Second World War, especially after Mussolini aligned with Hitler, many people covered these up. And what's happening now is people are uncovering them. They knew they were under there, and they're so proud to take me by the hand and show them the Star of David. We put a Star of David right at the entrance of our synagogue just for that reason, to remind people that throughout these towns there was a Mag and David in the, in the, on these stone floors, and that if they remember, maybe they'll tell us, and that is exactly what has happened. Rabbi, any negative people showing up at your door? I know we have a little bit about that in the film, but I'm curious whether you have concerns or whether this has happened. Well, um, I would I would have to be honest. I would have to say the negativity has come sadly from our people, and it has come from Orthodox Jews primarily, who say publicly, either either on television, radio, or 
in, in print through interviews that they are the only authentic Jews and that that woman rabbi isn't really Jewish. And uh, um, that's been that's been disheartening for me. That's been, but it comes with the territory. When I when I'm upset about it, occasionally my daughter reminds me. She said, "Look, mommy, you signed up to be a pioneer, so don't don't forget that." And uh, uh, also, there are there have been some people who come to me after having made some contact, especially up further north in Italy, with um, Chabad communities or with some of the more more ultra traditional communities, who tell them that they can be authentic Jews if they align with the more tra ultra-traditional. And so people will come to me with some very pointed questions. Are you really Jewish? Are you authentically Jewish? Is what you're doing really Jewish? And I can understand that because people who are just discovering their roots want to feel, that, and, 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 and they want to move forward, I should say, they want to feel that they are aligned with real Judaism. So these conflicts within within Judaism itself has proved to be very difficult for some of our um, our banana seams, some of our, our new Jews.